Hello everyone, my name is Tony Florida and I have a tutorial for you about how to install a specific version of Python into a virtual environment. And after going through this tutorial, you'll be able to understand how to do just that. And you can also have multiple different virtual environments and multiple different versions of Python running simultaneously on your machine. So let's get right into it. The first thing you want to do is check what version of Python you have. And right now, this new MacBook Pro that I just bought a month ago is running a very old version of Python, which is version 2.7.15. Now, if you go on to python.org, you'll see that the latest stable version of Python is Python 3.6.5. So they're way ahead right now. And I guess typically what you would normally do is click on this download Python 365. You'll get an installer for Mac OS X, but I'm gonna recommend that you do not do that and you follow these instructions instead. When you end up with uh, multiple versions of Python installed on your operating system in the user local bin directory, like we have here, you run into issues. So um, in order to avoid that, what we're going to do is install Python to a unique location. And we'll just point our virtual environment to that location. So what I want you to do next is go to the URL, the address bar, and after python.org, go to ftp slash python. Here, you're going to see all the different releases for Python. We are only interested in version 3.6.5. So once you find that link on the FTP server, I want you to look for a .tgz file for that specific version. And all you're gonna do here is copy the link address. And then we're done with the browser for now. So go into your downloads folder and wget that URL that you just copied. And if you don't have wget and you're on a Mac, you can get it through Brew or Homebrew. Just Google Homebrew Mac. And if you're on Unix system like Ubuntu or Linux Mint, you should have wget already installed. So now that we have that file downloaded, let's untar it, which is basically, uh, if you're familiar with zip files, it's going to be unzipping it. You're, you're essentially extracting the files from the archive. So we're going to do a tar zxvf, name of the file, which the file is in our, yes, it's right there, downloads. So once that's done, go into the extract it folder. And here you'll see that all the files have been extracted. Actually, one last thing before we build Python from source is we want to create a directory in our home directory called opt. So you can just do a make dir opt here. Now we are ready to build Python from source. And at this point in the tutorial, we're going to have two different steps for Mac users and Linux users. So if you're on a, on a Linux operating system, you have to do a configure dash dash prefix and set that prefix to the directory that you just created, the opt directory. And opt is just short for option. And uh, it's going to be where we keep all the different versions of Python that we have installed. So we'll call this one uh, users my name opt pi36 that's going to be where the this version of python ends up installing so so if you're on ubuntu or a linux operating system you can go ahead and execute this command but if you're on a mac we need to supply some additional flags to the configure script and the reason we want to do this is because open ssl is kind of set up weird on a mac so we want to be able to build Python from source with that SSL support explicitly. So to do that, we just had to add a couple extra flags here. So the first one is CPP flags, all caps, equals quotes, dash I for include. 
and we're gonna pass in here the path to where our um, OpenSSL is located. And in this case, um, I'm actually gonna cancel out of this command. To show you where OpenSSL is located, you just do brew dash dash prefix OpenSSL. And you'll see this, this path here, user local opt as OpenSSL. That's what we're gonna supply for the configure um, command. So we'll go back up to this point, just copy that and paste it down in here. And we really wanna just, after the dash I, include this path and then slash include. And then finally, we'll do something similar for the LD flags. And that's gonna be dash L, that same path slash lib. And then we'll close out our quotes. So go ahead and execute that if you're on the Mac. And this will take a bit. When we come back, we'll continue with the building from source. All right, so that wasn't too bad. Now, if you're familiar with building on the auto make system, the next command you wanna usually execute is make. And finally, we will do a make install. All right, we're back. And just if you're wondering, I'm scrolling through Instagram while I'm waiting for these things to compile. So follow me on Instagram and subscribe to this channel if you are getting value out of this. Anyway, um, now that we have a version of Python installed into our op directory, we can do a little bit of cleanup because we don't need any of these files anymore. So we can remove from the downloads directory the Python 3.6.5 folder, and we can also remove the Python 3.6.5 um, archive. All right, so now let's go into our opt direct. Actually, before we do that, um, let's make a directory out here in the root of our home directory and call it env for environment. And this is where our environments, our virtual environments are gonna live. So now we can go into the opt directory. And in here, we want to actually create our virtual environment with a specific version of Python, namely the Python 3.6 version that we just installed. So we're gonna do a virtual, actually, uh, if you don't have it already installed, um, you have to do a pip install virtual env. And I have that. So it's good to go, but if you don't, you'll see it install and then you can catch right back up with us. So anyway, uh, do a virtual install, or I'm sorry, a virtual env. And the next argument is the path to where you want the virtual environment to end up. And like I just mentioned, that's gonna be in our env directory and we're gonna put it into a virtual environment called pi36. What I just did was wrong. Um, actually, what that did was create a, a created a virtual environment with the default version of Python that's installed on my machine. And that is 2.7 and that's not what we wanna do. So let's actually remove that. Sorry about that. Um, what I forgot to tell you is when you do the virtual environment command, you have to not only specify the destination where you want the virtual environment to end up, but you also have to specify the version of Python that you want the virtual environment to have. So that for us is gonna be the one located in the opt directory that we just created. And once you navigate to that, you also want to go into the bin and find the Python three, any of these, these are all equivalent, Python 3, Python 3.6, they're, they're the same command. So this is sufficient for um, creating your virtual environment. So go ahead and execute that. All right, so this is great. Let's go back into our home directory and 
let's activate our virtual environment since we have it created now. So to do that, you just do source opt, I'm sorry, source env pi 36 bin activate. And you'll see here that you have a prefix here called pi36 and that's to indicate to you that you are actively working in your virtual environment. And to prove that's the case, when we do python-v for Python version, it comes back with Python 3.6.5. Now, one last thing, to get out of your virtual environment, you type in deactivate and you're back to your normal terminal window. And to again prove that, we do python-v. And if you remember from the beginning of the tutorial, the version of Python we started with was 2.7. So that's all I have for this tutorial. Um, like I said, you can do this for as many different virtual environments that you want. You can name them whatever you want. You can also do this for as many different versions of Python that you want. And uh, like I said also, I recommend that you install Python this way as opposed to installing it with an installer from python.org. So I hope you found this useful. Uh, please follow along if you're liking this tutorial. Definitely subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And I'll see you in the next episode.